So notice I'm down to the last four stitches of knitting the first half of my stitches. I'm going to knit into the back for two, and then I'm going to purl two, and I will show you how to make the turn. It's so wonderfully easy with Magic Loop. Hold on, here's what we do. We, okay, we're all done. Now this looks a little sloppy right now. That's just because it's your first round. Don't worry about it. So what you're gonna do, I go and I pull the cable from the back and I turn my work. So notice now the needle that I was working on has now become the back needle, okay? And what I do is I push the old needle all the way in. So I make my big huge loop again, pull the needle from the back up out and around and guess what I'm gonna do another row of knit into the back and purl to until I get to the end of this row and I will show you the turn one more time and then we're gonna talk about ribbing a bit and you're gonna have that little bit of homework to do before we go to the next step in your mitten knitting so here I am at the last two stitches of the back half of my stitches, or the last two stitches of the entire round, if you want to think of it like that. Anyway, I'm going to purl into those last two stitches, and then I'm going to turn my work. Now, I usually pull this needle out a little bit before I turn, just because I'm a little paranoid about my needle being jerked out of the wrong place and then I turn around so that the needles in the back that has the yarn coming from it I push the front needle into position making a nice big huge loop over here I pull the back needle out and around so that I end up with two little Mickey Mouse ears one over here one over here so now the only thing you need to remember when you go back and do the second round of your knitting is that remember you knit with two strands of yarn for those first two stitches. So you need to make sure that you go into the back. Remember you're knitting into the back of your knit stitches. You want to go into the back of both of those stitches that you used, okay? And you want to knit them just like you would. Take them off and you want to knit and take them off, okay? And then you're going to just go back to normal purling all the way around, okay? And you're gonna do your knit two, purl two ribbing for as deep as you want to have the cuff of your mitten be. Now, this is kind of your first choice of all of your knitting that you're going to be doing. The sample that I knit to kind of show you just how a mitten starts off as a plain old kind of knit sack, this actually is too short of a cuff for me. I like to be able to have a big, deep, folded over cuff. So if this hadn't been a sample, I probably would have knit a good four inches of ribbing. Now, a guy probably just wants a little bit of a cuff. I don't know, I, don't, I haven't made mittens for guys, but I'm just saying that's a possibility. You may like to not have it folded over, not have the bulk around your wrist, but still have it deep enough to kind of keep the snow out. That is your decision. But listen, let me tell you, what I want you to do is knit your, knit, to the, knit into the back two stitches, purl two stitches, knit into the back two stitches, purl two stitches, until you've made the ribbing the depth you want, and then stop because just then we need to talk about what kind of thumb you want to have, kind of thumb opening you want to have on your mitten. It's not a big deal, it's just that's a decision point when you're finished with your ribbing. So, do your ribbing and then get back to me and we'll talk about a variety of thumb openings and pros and cons and then you can make a decision on that.